Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, everybody. Let me just walk through some quick themes, and then I want to uh, mention some things the president talked talked to us just a little while ago. Um, as Sarah said, G20. Funny, it's not actually the G20 when we count it up properly, as Ambassador Bolton points out. It's much more than the G20. Now, in terms of the U.S. positions, uh, we're going to use this as an opportunity to talk about uh, our measures of tax cuts and deregulations and reskilling and job training and so forth that have generated significant economic growth and prosperity. Uh, that includes women's economic empowerment. As Sarah mentioned, free, fair, and reciprocal trade and trade reform. Uh, there'll be discussions of infrastructure finance and also uh, the U.S. emergence as the dominant energy power uh, in the world today, actually. In terms of the um, much discussed uh, meeting, it's going to be a dinner meeting. Uh, between President Trump and President Xi and uh, representatives from both sides. It'll be bilateral. Uh, I want to just mention what President told us um, a short while ago, and that is, in his view, there's a good possibility that a deal can be made. And that he is open to that. He is open to that. But having said that, some caveats, as always, Certain conditions have to be met with respect to uh, fairness and reciprocity, as we've said many times. For example, issues of intellectual property theft must be solved. Forced technology transfers must be solved. Significant tariffs and non-tariff barriers must be solved. Uh, issues of ownership uh, have to be solved. The President will probably reiterate his view. We want a world, ideally, of um, zero tariffs, zero non-tariff barriers, and zero subsidies. Now, whether they can get through all that remains to be seen, but that's the President's point of view, as I said just a little while ago. U.S. is coming to the summit in very good shape. Our economy is quite strong. It's growing at 3 percent over the past year. Uh, second quarter was 4.2, third quarter was 3.5, perhaps be revised upwards. We have a very strong holiday season, uh, so-called uh, Black Friday, very strong. Uh, we've had tremendous uh, investments, business investments, energy investments, oil prices and gasoline prices coming down. That helps consumers, of course. We're in very good shape. China, not so good. I'm not here to critique uh, or second-guess the Chinese economy. But most observers uh, believe China to be in a slump, whereas the United States is in a very strong, solid position going into this uh, summit. However, again, to repeat, the President said there is a good possibility uh, that we can make a deal, and he is open to it. But on the other hand, if these conditions I mentioned a few moments ago are not met, not dealt with, you know, the President has said, um, look, He's perfectly happy to stand on his tariff policies, which 10% um, last $200 billion, scheduled to go to 25%. That's not a certainty, but that's the schedule. And he has said uh, as recently as yesterday, the day before, if need be, if things don't work out in this, uh, in this uh, U.S.-China summit meeting, he will uh, invoke uh, another 267 some odd billion dollars in tariffs. That may not be the first choice. I'm just saying that is his view. If we can't get something done, and things have been moving very slowly between the two countries, until the president himself called President Xi and said, let's restart. Let's try to get things going again. And then since then, he's made uh, positive comments about that. So. We will, we will see. As I said, the key U.S. goals is around growth and prosperity, and um, you know, our economy is in good shape. Theirs is not. I'll just leave it right there. Uh, John, do you want to add stuff to that? Do you want me to take some questions? You sure? Okay, good. Let me take some questions and try to uh, help out on this. Yes? Mr. Cuddle, I'd like you to address uh, some concerns recently from uh, representatives of Italy and France 
in Germany who say that we, we're actually backing away from the national stage and they fear that Russia will be the dominant economic force in Europe and the Middle East in the coming years. Could you address those concerns, A, and B, can you tell us a little bit, if you can, about um, the layoffs at, uh, at GM? Well, I'll talk to you about GM layoffs. Regarding the Russian story, I'm going to leave that to my longtime friend, colleague John uh, Bolton. Um, I met with Mary Barry yesterday, and we had a, a lengthy conversation about the layoffs, the cause of the layoffs. It's a great disappointment, obviously. The president indicated his own disappointment. Um, he believes, as uh, frankly the Prime Minister of Canada, Trudeau, believes, that the USMCA deal was a great help to the automobile industry and to auto workers. And uh, by the way, they made those statements separately. And yet, GM comes in right after the deal. By the way, that deal will be signed in Argentina uh, with the U.S. Uh, and Canadian representatives. So there's great disappointment there. Um, there's disappointment that it seems like GM would rather build its electric cars in China rather than in the United States. Um, we are going to be looking at certain subsidies regarding electric cars and others, whether they should apply or not. I can't say anything final about that, but we're looking into it. Again, that reflects the president's own disappointment regarding these actions. Uh, Ms. Barrett told me, on the other hand, I want to be completely fair here, it's her business, um, it may be possible to transfer workers to other plants in Texas and Michigan. Uh, I, I, I'm not an expert on General Motors, I'm not an analyst, uh, auto analyst, but that's what she said. But obviously there's a lot of disappointment, even anger. Uh, I've heard it again from Mr. Trudeau, from President Trump, from Democrats and Republicans. Just to follow, do you think it's going to adversely affect our economy coming into the Christmas season and after? No, um, I mean, look, I don't want anybody to get laid off. Uh, I'm, I, I want workers to do very well. I want worker <laughs> wages to do well, and they are. I mean, that's one of the great things. You know, there's a certain amount of pessimism that I, I'm reading about. Um, maybe it has to do with a really a mild stock market correction. Let's not forget a couple weeks ago, just on this very point, we had 250,000 new jobs, which was a blockbuster number. Nobody really expected it. With a 3.1% yearly gain in wages and a 3.7% unemployment rate, those are very spiffy numbers by any benchmark in any metric. So again, holiday season layoffs from GM, brutal, brutal, all right? Uh, very disappointing. Will it affect the overall economy? I don't think so. I do not think so. Yes? Yeah, yeah. Uh, back to the question of the tariffs. And if, if these talks with President Xi go nowhere and we move forward with this escalation of the tariffs that you just described, which, correct me if I'm wrong, would be the biggest uh, addition of tariffs that we've seen in your lifetime, what, what will the impact be on the U.S. economy? I mean, you, you as That's a and long, I'm asking, that's uh -huh. a long period of time you mentioned. I, well, My you know, life. But, but I, I, you've, been, you've been a committed free trader for almost all of those years. Yes. So what what will be the impact on the U.S. economy if we see tariffs go up to the degree that you just described? You know, we'll see what happens, okay? I, I don't want to presuppose anything. The president's going to make up his mind after the meeting. But I, I will say this. Our economy is in very good shape right now. And when you multiply through whatever numbers you want to use, 250 billion or tack on another uh, tranche, which may or may not happen, uh, at a 10% tariff rate or more, it's really just a fraction of our economy. Okay, it's just a fraction of our economy. I'm not suggesting that um, there aren't winners and losers in that game. It's a complicated game. But on the other hand, I think we are in far better shape uh, to weather this than the Chinese are. And I want to say one th thing. I, I appreciate your characterization. I am a free trader. But you have to ask yourself, this is what President Trump has been talking about, is it free trade when there's clear evidence of unfair and WTO illegal trading practices by China for several decades. Is that fair? Is that free? Is it free when um, intellectual property theft occurs or when 
Chinese ownership of American companies force trans, uh, transference of technology from American companies to the Chinese companies. Is that fair? Or high tariffs on agriculture and industrial supplies. Is that fair? So President Trump is the first president in, I don't know, at least 20 years, and I'm including Democrats and Republicans, who not only has made this case, but continues to make this case forcefully and to take actions to defend American workers and our overall economy. Other presidents in both parties have raised the issue and then walked away from it. And President Trump obviously doesn't intend to. You know, this is under the heading, I think, for him of uh, promises made, promises kept. It's something he's talked about for several years, and he now continues. If China will come to the table, or in this case, the dinner table, uh, with some new ideas and some new attitudes and some new cooperation, as the president said, they can make a deal. He's open to it. So nothing is written in, in cement or stone. But again, for a free trader, where's the free trade? And for several months now, since I've been here, the president and I have talked about this. Uh, you know, we'd love to see a world of zero tariffs and zero non-tariff barriers and zero subsidies. We'd love to see that world. But unfortunately, we don't have that world, particularly with respect to China, but not only China. And so he's taking actions that he thinks will get us closer to that world. Let me go around. Uh, yes, please. Thanks. Just another GM question. When the president said yesterday they better damn well open a new plant there very quickly, was he just venting his frustration, or does he have some consequences in mind if they don't? Um, you know, I'm going to leave that to him. Um, there, you may find additional announcements coming on that topic. Uh, some more. Let me go in the back. Yes, ma'am. I wanted to ask you about what um, Ambassador Shui Tiankai said recently to the Who? Wall Street Journal. Ambassador Shui Tiankai, the Chinese ambassador yes. uh, to the United States, um, his thought was that there would be a real risk to global uh, to the global markets if there wasn't a deal that they could become fragmented as well. How big are the stakes uh, if you can't reach a deal? Look, the ambassador makes a point. Now, if he would do his part, or his government would do their part, then we can all make a much better point. That's, that's what President Trump is saying. I mean, I'll read you the quote again. There's a good possibility we can make a deal, and he's open to it. But certain conditions, you know, have to be met. Certain things have to be changed. And the president, again, in the spirit of promises made, promises kept, is going to defend you know, the interests of American workers and ranchers and small businesses and the economy writ large. We, we, let me just add one other point to this. The rest of the world agrees with us. I mean, we signed at the UN, for example, a trilateral agreement with the EU, the United States, and Japan. Uh, worth looking at that document which outlines you know, what they call non-market abuses, read China. Um, just recently, before the Shanghai conference, where President Xi was to give a, an important speech, uh, I'm not sure it was much new there, but in any case, just before that conference, with no prodding from the USA, the ambassadors, the French and German ambassadors to China, French and German ambassadors to China wrote a very tough piece going after, again, non-market, unfair, non-reciprocal trading practices. There is broad-based support for the American position here, which is China should change its practices and come into the community of responsible trading nations. They can do that. Right? They're a major economy right now. It's not like they were 25 or 30 years ago. We would welcome it. The president has said he's happy to make a deal, but they have to take certain actions and give certain um, assurances. So, you know. Senator, do you think you'll spend the G20 getting that support around your position from other countries at the G20? Well, I'm sure we will. 
I'm sure we will. We have in many other forms. There's a couple more. I want, I want Ambassador. I want Ambassador. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, you can talk to me. Uh, uh, tariffs are, in effect, a tax on imported products that are paid for by the consumer. So does the president realize that these escalated tax, uh, tariffs are going to be paid for by the American citizens? Well, look, he realizes the ramifications. As I said earlier, um, given the strength of our economy, given the size of our economy, uh, we are in position to deal with this and handle this very well. That's the key point. And um, I'm not so sure about China, but I'll leave that to China experts and so forth and so on. The benefits, let me just look at the other side of the ledger, it's very important. The benefits of true free trade globally will be enormous. Now, if we go back to the idea of zero tariffs and zero non-tariff barriers and zero subsidies, if China plays by the rules, even the WTO rules and all that needs reforming in our judgment, but they're violating those rules. If we do have a free trading system or we move in the direction of a free trading system, a true free trading system, we will benefit enormously. Frankly, we will benefit, they will benefit, and the rest of the world will benefit. Now, free trade throws off enormous benefits when it's done properly in consistency and, and, and in a reciprocal manner. That's a key point President emphasized. He's absolutely right. So, you know, I think of it as a possibly a long rainbow here. At the end of that rainbow is a pot of gold. You open up that pot and you have prosperity for the rest of the world. But you got to get through that long rainbow. We're not there yet. We can get there. The president is reaching out. But we'll see uh, how that works. Sir, 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 sir. Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry, thank yes. Go uh, ahead. Thank, thank you, sir. Uh, earlier, you mentioned oil, low oil and gas prices as evidence that the president's economic policy is working. Uh, you mentioned the U.S. becoming the global uh, dominant yes. energy player. Mm -hmm. uh, but nearly days ago, the president said that it was necessary to let. Uh, Saudi Arabia and its crown prince get away with ordering the murder of a Washington Post journalist because Saudi Arabia ensures low gas prices. Now, which one is it, sir? Uh, I'm going to let Ambassador uh, Bolton handle that question. Uh, I, I'm trying so hard to swim in my own lane, and uh, I think John will help out with uh, that whole discussion. Is, is it? He, he's is sitting it there much too calmly and quietly, so I'll get him up here. We've known each other.